Well, good morning, Calvary Baptist Church. It is great to see you here for Family Friday, and it is Good Friday as we are starting to celebrate Easter weekend. And I am so excited that we get to spend a little bit of time together. Uh, hopefully this week, everything should look the right way. It looks good to me. So uh, I'm sorry last week I found out after it was all backwards, but I think you should be able to see everything that I'm doing okay this week. And you know, one of the things I've been doing this week is spending a little bit of time and checking to see how people are spending their time. And uh, I know that's a, it's, it's a unique time that we're in. And I've seen a lot of people talking about their reading books, uh, they're spending family time together, playing a lot of board games, doing puzzles, those sorts of things. Um, but as the days go by, I'm also starting to notice that people are starting to dig back a little bit, watch some old movies, maybe read some old books, uh, watch some old TV shows. Uh, and I've actually seen it called the good old days. That There's a lot of people who are watching uh, from the old days. And, uh, you know, one of the things I've done is I've started watching some movies that uh, with the kids and and sometimes when you watch an old movie that somebody else has seen but you haven't here's what tends to happen is you're gonna get a little nudge they're gonna go hey wait till you see this this is like the best part ever or maybe a you know a character will walk on screen and they'll say something like see that guy he's not who you think it is and it's like really that's what you're, you're gonna you're gonna wreck that for me you're gonna tell me that or, or maybe you're reading a book that somebody's read before and they'll walk over and they'll say something to you like Hey, did you get to the part yet where you found out that like all the treasure is fake? And you're like, wait, the treasure's fake? What? Wait, why would you do that? What? Why would you go ahead and ruin that? And I think that what we need to have for people is something called a spoiler alert. Now, a spoiler alert would just be something that happens that would tell you that uh, a person is about to say something that they might tell you what's gonna happen in the future, and you have to decide when you hear the spoiler alert whether or not you're gonna to listen to it. I wonder if it could just maybe pop up. It could like look like spoiler alert, exactly, just like that. And uh, something like that would be, you know, that would be worthwhile uh, to see, but it might not get everybody's attention. So I wonder what it would sound like if it had an alarm. Whoa. Okay, that alarm, uh, that one's a little bit uh, annoying, to be honest. I think we need something a little bit cooler. That's the one right there. Spoiler alert with that sound. So somebody's gonna say something that might let you in that something's gonna happen. You hear that noise and you're ready to go. You gotta pay attention and see what's going on. Well, you know, today's Good Friday, and every Good Friday, I start to wonder, I wonder what it was like that day for the disciples and for uh, Jesus' followers. I wonder what they must have felt like after Jesus was crucified. I mean, Jesus was the man who had come, and he was the Messiah. He was the one that was supposed to be uh, saving them from their enemies. And, and yet, he, at the end of this day, he was, he was in a tomb. Um, or, you know, they had been uh, eyewitnesses to watching him perform miracles. Uh, he'd even walked on water. But then on, on Good Friday, they, they saw him nailed to a cross. And I think that uh, even as I say those words, sometimes just picturing Jesus uh, on the cross, I, I can get a little sad because I know that it was, it was us that put him there. In fact, the Bible tells us that the disciples were scared. They went and they locked themselves in a room. They were afraid of what was going to happen. We know that other people were mourning as well. But what I started to notice as I started to consider this is that they'd actually missed something that was really important. See, they missed something that Jesus had told them. Jesus actually gave them a spoiler, but they missed it. And I'm going to show you two examples, and I just want to, want to, let's just play a little bit of a game together. I want to see if you can spot the spoiler. If you can spot, Jesus is going to tell them something that they probably should have been paying attention to. Let's go to Matthew 17, verses 22 to 23. And it says, when they came together in Galilee, he said to them, that's Jesus said to them, 
The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. Did you see it? Did you catch it in there? There's a spoiler in there. Let's check out another one. Here's Mark 8, verses 31 to 32. It says, He then began to teach them. That's again, Jesus teaching the disciples that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. How about now? Did you catch it? Did you catch the spoiler that Jesus gave? He told them what was going to happen, but they missed it. So let's add my spoiler alert now. We're going to add the spoiler alert. It's going to come up, and then I want to see if you got it right. Okay? So let's go back to our Matthew passage. And here we go. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And... <laughs> spoiler alert. On the third day, he will be raised to life. There it is. He told him, he said, listen, I'm, I'm going to die, but three days later, I'm going to be raised to life. But the disciples missed it. And we know that they missed it because look at that. Look at what it says next. It says, and the disciples were filled with grief. They missed it. They didn't catch it. Here's that second passage from Mark again. Let's add the spoiler alert here this time. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed and then... <laughs> spoiler alert means pay attention after three days rise again. It says he spoke plainly about this. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Rebuke him means that he tried to correct him. Jesus just told him, I'm going to be killed and I'm going to raise three days later. Peter missed it so much, he pulled Jesus aside and tried to correct him. Can you even imagine? Can you even imagine that? They missed it again. Now, Good Friday is a day that we're to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. There's no question about that. And that is so important. We need to be reminding ourselves of that every day. See, Jesus was perfect, which meant he was without sin completely. He didn't sin ever, not even once. But when he went to the cross, he didn't just endure the physical pain that he had on the cross and that he experienced, but he also took on all of God's wrath. And that was our punishment. That was what we deserved for our sin. And he did it on our behalf so that we could be saved. It was the greatest act of love. And that's why we call this Good Friday. See, for us, it is the best possible scenario. Jesus showed the greatest act of love. And God made a way for us to come back to him forever and ever and ever. And isn't that good? Isn't that good? And that's why we call it Good Friday. But the disciples, they missed it. They missed it and they didn't see it. They didn't know what was going on. They were so confused. In fact, they were probably thinking, I don't even want to, I mean, what Good Friday? This, this isn't a Good Friday. This is the worst Friday ever. Ever and ever and ever. The worst They've seen things that they couldn't believe. They experienced emotions that they couldn't have. Their savior was on a cross and buried. And they didn't know why. They were completely... Gone. We get it now. We can see it. But there are days we have really bad days, aren't there? There are things that are going to happen in our lives where just really bad things are going to happen. And um, we need to, to sometimes search out and see... What do I do with that when I have a bad day? Well, good news. Because the Bible is full of so many spoilers, really, that God gives us for situations like this, where he tells us exactly what's going to happen. He says, um, search my word, and you're going to find truth in there. You're going to find this, this book is going to give you guidance. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you 
a spoiler of what's about to happen. Let me give you a couple of examples. I have three of them, okay? Let's say that you're feeling, first spoiler alert, let's say that I'm feeling, I'm feeling alone and I'm feeling afraid. Look what Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says. What a promise this is. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Isn't that great? So when we're feeling that, maybe that sense of, of fear or that sense of loneliness, we can have something go off in our mind that says, you know what? God's told me something about this. He's told me that I don't need to be afraid and that I don't need to be discouraged. Maybe I'm, I'm fearful and I'm feeling alone and I feel like I need help. But when we're feeling that way, we should have another one of these. Another spoiler alert. Okay, God said something about this. What did he say? Well, let's check out Isaiah 41.10, where he says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That is so amazing that we can remember that. If we're discouraged and we're afraid, we're not sure what to do because of the situation we're in. Here's one more. We should hear that one more time. We hear it. We go, look what he said to Joshua, for example. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God goes with you wherever you go. Maybe you're feeling some things these days and you're uncertain and you're unsure. This is why God says, take my word, write it on your hearts, learn these verses, preach them to yourself every day. Because these verses are these things that when we're feeling a certain way, God said, it's okay, I've got it, it's handled, it's all taken care of. So whether we're feeling worried or sad, we just have to remember that God has told us that he's never going to forsake us. Good Friday is really the greatest reminder of his love. He loves us so much that he'd endure the cross for us. But on Easter Sunday, we know it's going to happen. We get it. I'm going to give you the spoiler for Easter. On Good Friday, Jesus was in the tomb. But on Sunday, he rose again. He beat death. He conquered it. And one more. He's going to return again. And when he does... And we're all brought, we're going to be in the, pre those who know him and those who have received salvation through faith in Jesus, we are all going to be united with our Savior for eternity. And that is an amazing, amazing promise that we get. So as we go into this weekend, this was just something that, that was reminded of me is let's always remember that when we're feeling sad or when we're feeling worried or we're feeling concerned, God has given us the spoiler. He said, listen, don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. I'm God. I'm in control. Now, last week, I had Abby join me for a little activity. Today, I'm going to ask her to join us again. So, Abby, come on in. It's uh, nice to see you. I get to see you all the time, which is nice. Uh, and uh, just so everybody else is aware, too, uh, my other daughter, Emma, is actually doing all of our tech for us as well. So, Emma, you want to say hi to everybody? Hi, church family. It's there good she to is. see you all. There's Emma, which is great. So it's nice to see her as well. But Abby, you've come up with another, uh, an Easter uh, craft, an Easter art project that mm -hmm. we can do together. Why don't you show everybody what it is that you're planning on doing, and, um, and, and we'll show them how to do it. All right. So after Jesus was on the cross, he got buried in a tomb. But we know that he didn't stay there. He rose again. Yay! <laughs> Okay, so for this craft, I did a tomb on the front, a banner on the back that says, He is risen, Mark 16, 6, because that's where the verse is found. And then a little Jesus, and it also says He is risen. So, what you're going to need for this craft is a piece of paper, scissors, tape, some markers, and something that stick like, like a pencil. I'm using a plastic fork. So... What you're going to need to do is take a sheet of paper and what I drew were these five shapes. So the tomb, the boulder, Jesus, and then I made two banners. Now banners are a little bit hard to draw, so I'm going to show you how to make them. Do I get to draw one? <laughs> yeah, course. I do. Excellent. Do I have a marker? Yep. Great. Can I have it? There you go. Awesome. Okay. 
Here's what you're going to do to start. You're going to draw a rectangle. Got it. Then, halfway up the rectangle, you're going to draw two lines going out. Got it. Okay. Then you're going to draw little triangles over there. Okay. Okay. Then you're going to go in a little bit. Okay. And then you're going to go up. Okay. And then you're going to draw triangles in there and color them in. Okay. I did it. You did it? Yep. All right, let's see it. Do you remember last week I told you I'm only good at drawing circles? Okay, maybe you can draw my banner for me. I might need some help. Okay. That's okay. All right, so go ahead. I made a big one and a little one. And with the little one, I put it over top of that. And then what you're going to do is take a paper cup. Paper cups are easier, but you can use like a plastic cup. And you're going to take scissors and make a hole in the bottom just by taking the scissors and go in like that over and over again until you get a hole. Then you're going to take the Jesus that you made and tape it onto the fork. And you can design it really however you want. You can be unique with it. And then you can tape on all of your other designs that you made. And then you put this through the hole. And it moves up and down. And that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. So that's a great little reminder for us, just with a cup, some paper, a little bit of creativity. Uh, certainly a rectangle that's not a circle, which I'll figure out one day. I'm so glad you're here to help me. Thank you, Abby. And, um, you know, it's just been a great time together. Listen, happy Easter um, uh, as we go into this uh, next, uh, or into, the, into this weekend, uh, don't forget that tomorrow we've got our midday moment with Pastor Mark. We've also got on Sunday, uh, we've got our service. And listen, if you're on, not on our Spark Calvary page for families, please uh, find your way there. Get on there because uh, right after this, we're going to have this message posted again so you can watch the videos again. Uh, and, sh and see how to do what Abby just did. But we're also going to have uh, a video posted that you and your family can watch on Sunday um, just f that, that goes through the Easter story. Uh, it's a wonderful way to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to pray for us and, um, and we're going to uh, wrap up today. God, thank you so much for your, uh, your greatness and for your, your promises that you've given us, Lord, that we can look at them and we can uh, listen to them and we can uh, put them on our hearts, God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, so that when we experience uh, all sorts of emotions through times like this, whether we're afraid or whether we're anxious, God, whether we feel like we're alone uh, or that we need help, God, that you have told us that we're not and that we can be strong, that we can be, uh, we can be courageous. So God, I just thank you for uh, this day that we get to remember what you've done for us on the cross. What a powerful, powerful um, re just demonstration of love, God. Thank you so much for saving us, God, and giving us a way back, uh, back to you forever and, and for eternity. God, as we uh, go through this Easter weekend too, let's uh, always remember that it was uh, you who defeated death for us on our behalf, God. So we love you and uh, we give you praise. We give you the rest of this weekend. Uh, we thank you for this short time we've gotten to spend together. And uh, we give you praise in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day.